Welcome back to the Marching to Madness College Basketball Podcast, where I have my good friend, Aaron Gannat, the head coach of the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. They're 6-2 and two in the Big West. They're tied for third with UC Riverside. The Rainbow Warriors <clears throat> took a 67-63 win over the Highlanders on Saturday evening. Coach, welcome. Thanks for having me. Always look forward to catching up. Oh, yeah, it's always great. Uh, You got a kid there, Jovan McClanahan. He had 19 points, Bernardo Da Silva 18, and what was a hard fought 67-63 win over a very good UC Riverside basketball team. The the stat I pulled out of there that that was really uh, impressive to me was you held them to 31.9% from the floor. Yeah, and we needed to. Um, they did a good job. We've been a good rebounding team. They out-rebounded us. So for us to get a good road win against a really good team, we have to do some other things pretty well. We've been really consistent defensively. I hope that continues. Um, and, you know, holding them to 31, I think under 30 from three, uh, gave us a chance in the nine turnovers, obviously. You mentioned Bernardo De Silva played great. Javon McClanahan continues to play well for us. And, you know, we're very humbled by it because we know how tough a uh, uh, league this is and how well Coach Riverside is. And they were in first place going into that game on their home court. Um, and it was a battle like all our games in our league will be. So just appreciative of our group for fighting to the end and doing some other things pretty well other than, you know, obviously getting rebounded, out-rebounded. Let's go back one month. McClanahan, he hit a mm-hmm. late three-pointer to allow you guys to win there in Diamond Head. Yeah, a great one of the best events in the country over the holidays, obviously, and the championship has been on Christmas Day. So something you'll never forget, uh, our first championship appearance, our first championship win, and to do it on that stage the way it played out uh, with a game winner from McClanahan was pretty special. His dad was in the stands. It was electric in the Stan Share Center, and it was uh, you know a, a competitive kid who's continued to make big plays late for us. So uh, it was a great moment, and what we said then, too, is obviously one we want to build off. Yeah, definitely. I watched it uh, on TV. Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, Javon's a competitive uh, player. It looks like your whole team kind of follows him as the whole Hawaii basketball team is, to me anyway, is competitive, and, and, and you're a tough out. Yeah, it's a it's a big part of our identity, a big part of our culture. Obviously, we've had, as you know, some guys out for the year. And even this recent stretch, last two or three weeks, we've had five guys out. But how do you make up for that? Well, again, I think it starts with Javon as the head of the snake, the competitive spirit and the fight. Uh, it's everybody. And that's why we've been able to defend like we've been defending outside of the Riverside game. And, and hopefully that exposed some areas we can get better at. We've been rebounding the ball really well. And, you know, that that's usually the biggest signs of toughness, the defense, defensive end, the rebounding, the winning plays, the 50-50 balls, as we try to continue to figure out and navigate our group and bring them together in, in all areas when we're missing some guys. Javon uh, came on last season. <clears throat> he ran things really well, I thought, overall from the point. How has he expanded his game since a year ago? Well, as you know, you know, third year in the program, the game usually slows down for guys. He's playing the hardest and most important position. He's a fighter, he's a worker. So, you know, a big part of our program is development. Um, some of that, obviously, in its half because we got to do a good job as a staff developing guys, and we have to bring in guys who work. Well, he's a monster worker. He lives in the gym. And like I said, so many reps now over the years, the game slowed down for him. Um, he sees things well as on, on both ends. Um, he's become more of a leader. Uh, and then you know that it is, it's not just the experience. You have to have some mini breakthroughs that lead to bigger breakthroughs. And then the confidence comes, even though he's always been a confident kid, but he can now lean on past success um, in so many different games late too. I mean, you mentioned the buzzer beater, but he's had some big plays before that. And since uh, he wants the ball in his hands late, he hits big free throws. He did the other night. You guys have a tough defensive attack and allow mm-hmm. it only 30 30- Point four percent from the floor, 61.2 points per game as well. How have you been able to stop your opponents and allow only 4.1 on average, three-point makes per game? Yeah, you know, it's been coming. I mean, we've also, you know, one, it's our guys, and, you know, sometimes you got to be fortunate a little bit too, but the guys raise, rise to the challenge when we play some really good shooting teams as well. 
I think you can see it over the years. You've been a team that that doesn't allow many uh, threes made or attempted. Um, we make people make plays. We don't give up too many assists. Uh, but we also know it's humbling. we got to keep coming with that. Um, I think a big part of that has been both point of attack, defense, and team. You can't have one without the other. There's And we've limited lapses, and we've become better in transition. And while our rebounding was really not to our level the other day, that's another way you can defend threes. You know, there's so many threes that people get in transition, so many pe threes people get off an offensive rebound. Um, I think we've been better there, even though last night wasn't very good. Um, mm -hmm. And then we've done a good job point of attack. So a lot of teams, it's kind of been one or two guys. I think we're good at each spot defensively, and we really defend as a team and try to be very disciplined. I think, you know, it's humbling to say that because we know a couple lapses and here come the floodgates. So we got to keep it going. I was going to ask you about uh, how you defend the three. Uh, is this a situation where, you know, like, quickness of guards allow you to pick up the shooters around the perimeter where they can't get a good, you know, they can't get a good look. Yeah. Well, I think it's a bunch of things, to be honest. I think um, if you, we, we try not to get into in rotation too often, you know, people talk about not giving up threes. Well, there's the obvious ones. We do have do a pretty good job of closeouts and hard hand on threes. And then the other one is, you know, penetration leads to threes. If you give up, penetration and you're in scramble to so much in rotation uh, a lot of things can happen so I think in, for the most part we do a good job getting out of rotation when we're in rotation uh, we, we talk really well we scramble we fight and we make sure we don't have two on the ball so like I said um, we've done it pretty well over the last couple of years obviously so far really well this year and but you know it as you know and there's a lot of good teams out there uh, we've we've done a good job of getting people out of those stretches where we hit three, four in a row. So um, it's it's I hope I really hope we can keep that going. Hey, Noel Coleman is your leading scorer, and he plays, of course, with uh, Javon up top. Now, does he do a lot of his scoring off the dribble as well as shooting? It it felt like as I was looking through the stats and a couple of clips and things that you know you can see him going to the basket. Uh, with regularity yeah no I think he's overall and obviously he's he's continued like I said with a lot of guys improved his game he's developed um, I'm really proud of him he's become an all-around player every year uh, his assists are up uh, people are targeting him so uh, you know he shot 44 percent from three last year and he's not gonna get many good looks and shouldn't uh, moving forward but he's done a better job as you saw he got he's gone to the line in league five or six times a game um, and, and he's really, def he's been a big part of our defense too, obviously. So I think, uh, and he's played heavy minutes for us. So, you know, the other day he got a big 50, 50 ball for us. So I think, you know, he's doing a lot of different things while teams are really targeting him, but it's allowed us to be better. Kamaka Hepa is six, nine shoots the three at 37.6%. Uh, he and Coleman both average right around two triples a game. So discuss how these two work off of each other and maybe combat defenses so the other one can have an opportunity. Yeah, well, I think they both right away spread the floor. I said targeting with with Noel. They do the same with Kamaka. And and he's tough because of his hot size, as you said. He can shoot over the top. He's become an improved passer. Both those guys have really improved their overall games uh, while people are targeting them. And, yes, it could be for – you know, for each for each other. But to be honest, a lot of the drives we've had, let's say McClanahan, um, Samuta Vea, Bernardo getting uh, isolated in the post, that's because those two guys are out there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's really important. They're invaluable. And eventually things will open up back for them again because those other guys are hurting them. So it, it's give and take. Um, it's really about discipline and sacrifice because at the end of the day, all they care about, and this is a credit to them and why we've been good, is about winning. You know, some guys can get frustrated when you get targeted. I mean, we wouldn't let Kamaka or Noel get free looks. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of teams in our league. Every team in our league is really well coached. So uh, they're doing the same. And for them to find other ways to impact the game and even continuing to spread the floor and not get frustrated is a really good quality. And, you know, I, I expect uh, that to continue from them and, and then co to continue to find other ways to impact the game. Now, De Silva is a solid 6'9 post. He leads you in rebounding, and he shoots 55.4%. How much is he able to resonate with these guys being 
better passers once they catch the ball high. Yeah, well, I think he's done a good job. Like I said, he's now in his fourth year in our program, and this was his first offseason where he's been healthy. But, you know, I think he's one of the best passing bigs in our league. Uh, he could make an argument for the best. And I think that his disruption defensively, you talk about six nine fourth-year guy, he's got seven foot two wingspan. Uh, he understands timing better uh, defensively. Um, the game has also slowed down for him. So when you can play through five different guys at any time, including a guy in the post and Bernardo and on the elbows or on the perimeter and in the post and Kamaka Hepa, that's a huge luxury to have. We have two veteran front court players uh, that play well together, that share the ball really well. They're unselfish. Um, that's hard to find, especially in a big. I know assist to turnover ratio is important for everybody. And I was looking uh, you guys are a, are a minus 1.4 on that. Uh, what things do players do to improve? Yeah, no, that's the one. No, I, I knew it was coming at some point from you. The, neg the negative question, that would, no, that, that's something we've obviously targeted. I mean, we, we are a team that has always shared the ball at the highest assist percentage. And I know we're doing a really good job defensively there. I wish we weren't doing such a poor job offensively there. And, um, I think that was, you know, you got to chip away at a problem. We've got, we've, it's been exposed. It's been addressed. Um, that's why I was so pleased the other day. How do you win at Riverside after, you know, a tough game there? We have nine turnovers. We're 10 and 0 when we turn it over 11 or less. And mm -hmm. so there's been one, it's credit the defense. I think in general, everyone in the country is uh, taking people off the three and making them make plays and um, limiting assists. And, you know, so for me, uh, you know, to be perfectly honest, it's disappointing uh, where we're at, but it is the, it's kind of confront the brutal facts. We are not doing a good job in assist to ratio. Um, and that's an area, if we can improve in down the stretch here, we can make a big jump. But, you know, I think teams are, you know, getting, not letting us get into rotation offensively and, and credit them too. We have some teams in our league that do a good job pressuring the ball and mixing some presses, but certainly an area we need to get better at. And for sure, if we want to do what we want to do. Yeah, you know, the Big West is always, in my mind, one of the most underrated conferences in the, in the country. Um, and, of course, you see Santa Barbara comes to the island for the first mm -hmm. matchup of the season on Friday. What are the key ideas in being able to match up with uh, a guard like A.J. Mitchell and then a forward like Miles Norris as their two leading scorers? Yeah, I mean, you talk about uh, incredible challenge, and they've obviously had another great year off to a great start and do it on both ends and have uh, all-conference talent and are well-coached and are mm -hmm. balanced and, and have an inside-out attack. I mean, they have guys you could see at all-conference players in the front court. You mentioned Norris, who's really doing well in League Two, averaging 15 games, shooting over 40 from three. They brought in Andre Kelly, as you know, from Cal, who's mm -hmm. been very impactful his first year and, and really hurts people inside, has an incredible touch. And you got an elite point guard uh, in, in Mitchell, who is just building off his freshman year, um, really plays slow in the paint, uh, can finish with both hands, strong, gets, you know, um, makes clutch plays. But, you know, they also bring back a lot of veterans, Sonny and uh, Pierre-Louis and um, Wishard. And so obviously they have all the makings of a good team. And, and that's uh, shown true thus far this year. Coach Aaron Gannat, one of the top teams in the Big West Conference at the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. A must watch. We got to get more Big West on TV, Coach. I think you said it. It's a terrific league. Um, great coaches, great continuity, great talent, great developing talent. Um, you're talking about a lot of continuity among staff. So, And you can see it. I know everywhere in the country, conference play, you can see a lot of battles. You certainly already see it in our league. A lot of overtime games, triple overtime games, games that could go either way, exciting games. I have a lot of respect for uh, the programs, the coaches, the talent in our league, for sure. Hoopologist like me likes to study a team like the Big West and, and, and kind of feel the teams. I mean, if you can't watch them as much as you want on TV, you can feel the teams through talking, of course, to you and your colleagues in the league and studying, studying stats, studying clips and everything. No question. And as you know, there's been more games on TV and more games that are streaming. And obviously, as you get to March and you get some more opportunities to watch us, I would take advantage of that as well. It's exciting brand of basketball. There's a lot of different styles in our league. 
that are very mm -hmm. effective in different ways. And it's, uh, you know, we know we have a battle every night and I think that's pretty awesome. So mm -hmm. coach, good luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.